How are you doing today, sir? Steve, it is good to see you. How are you? Doing excellent. I just want to say how happy I am that the about everything. I, I mean that as sincere as I can say it. Thank you, my friend. That means a lot. I appreciate it. Me too. Yes, I can only imagine. Listen, I got a lot of questions for you. I'm going to try to do it quick. Um, okay. Enola Holmes 2 opens the door at the end for the possibilities of a lot of different things. And mm -hmm. I'm just curious, have you guys already talked about a possible spinoff? Or do you think Sherlock will always exist in the Enola world, if you know what I mean? Um, I do know what you mean, yes. And I think I think there's there's so many options there. And the important thing for me is making sure that I can give everything I need to give to every one of the characters that I play. And as we know, I'm I'm getting busier and my plate is becoming slightly more full. So I think it's it's all about making sure that I have the time to 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 serve the characters as I need to. Yeah, it, it has to be weird being it listen, it, it's what you won the actor lottery. You know, you get to do all these different things. I I, I can't imagine the scheduling. Um do you enjoy one of the things I like about you and Enola is that you're not the toughest person in the room. You can actually right. get your ass kicked. And I'm curious for you, is it more fun playing the person who can get their ass kicked or the one who is kicking ass? Hey, they, they <laughs> I there's there is something um novel about being the one who gets his ass kicked. Um it's cuz there's something to <sighs> It, there's an important piece which you play to that, which is it, it goes in line with being a supporting actor, right? As a supporting actor in this, I'm supporting Enola's story. As a guy who can get his ass kicked in a room, I'm supporting everyone else's story in that room, where if you're the guy who kicks everyone else's ass, because that's not the truth in real life, you have to rely on everyone else in the room to sell that as well. It can't just be up to you. And so it's it's novel to be one of the players in support of that rather than um, relying on everyone else to be the one selling that. You've worked with so many very talented actors and done so many different things. Of all the things you've worked on, what ended up being the toughest shot that you did on one of these sets? The one that just really, you know what I mean, The one whether it be yeah. camera moves, whether it be um, whatever it may be. That's a that's a really good question. And weirdly, I think it, even though it's not a single shot, it's a sequence. And I love the sequence and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Uh, but physically, the most enduring, um, uh, it's so much of an endurance race, was a Mission Impossible helicopter sequence uh, because it was so extremely cold, um, literally above the Southern Alps in winter with the doors open on a helicopter. And I'm sticking my face into the wind and firing blanks with all sorts of stuff flying back at me and just doing it over and over and over again, completely deaf, just waiting for the pilot to scream something inaudible and do this, which meant we're rolling. And so I had to then just keep on acting with my head out the window until I assumed that they had stopped shooting. And so I was watching either Tom's helicopter in front or behind and watching the camera ship as well to see when the camera ship kind of pulled away and did its own thing. And I was like, okay, I think that means I can sit back in now. And I'll do that for 40 minutes, then land, and then sit by uh, a little uh, like red rad heater, warm my hands up. And within half an hour, they're like, right, we're refueled, let's go again. And it was just having to, to suck it up and do that for, I think it was at least two weeks. Um, but that was, that was rough, but I absolutely love the sequence and it was so worth it. There's nothing worse than spending all of your energy and time and heart and soul trying to do something and the other ingredients aren't there, but on a Mission Impossible movie, oof, I mean, all the ingredients are there. And so it was such a pleasure to do. Last question for you. Um, obviously I want to ask you about Superman and I, I know you can't talk about anything coming up because it's all being figured out, but I am yep. curious, what was it like for you putting on the suit again, getting ready to film the cameo, because the truth is like, what were your emotions? Because the truth is it, it might've been over. It might not not have ever happened again. It was a, it was a powerful moment for me, a meaningful moment. Um, I, I was given a choice of, of which, which suit I wanted to wear. And, and I went straight for the man of steel suit. 
uh, that one holds the most nostalgia for me and and the most meaning. And to put that back on and to stand there in front of a mirror, suited up again, it's the suit holds a special power and and there's no there's no way of getting around that even if you're the one wearing it and to to see myself standing back in that suit was a is a meaningful moment it's difficult to describe um, many years hoping planning striving doing everything i can to to get back into it and then finally be able to get back into it uh it meant a lot, and it's something that I won't quickly forget. Thank you for your time, and congrats on Enola Holmes too. It's another really fun movie. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to talking to you in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Have a great day.